Ah. Uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time, or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother, just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Today, I'm making a beef and mushroom thick chunky soup served in a giant bread roll like that. It's gonna be amazing. Um, I was gonna do something a bit more flashy, flamboyant, and I was actually gonna wear a French made outfit. I got back from a stag weekend uh, yesterday, but I'm just really tired. I just want something to just sort of re-energize myself, feel good and warm and all tasty and cozy. You know, it's still the summer out there, it's raining, so we're feeling kind of like down, so we just need someone that's gonna just make us feel good about ourselves. This is gonna be a beef mushroom soup, all the ingredients you need if you hit pause on a video now and write them all down here. But I just wanted to quickly show you the carrot. I won't show you all the steps of the veg because you know we've done that before. Look, it's a really weird carrot. It looks like a, you know, like a pair of chopsticks or some legs. I know, or witch's fingers, as Mrs. Barry said. Um, here I've got some beef. Uh, this is some chopped beef. That's just going to go in a pan like that. We'll start it off now. And here is a mixing bowl which has got hot, boiling hot water in it. And we're going to get some porcini mushrooms. Oh, very fragrant, very, very fragrant. It smells like dog food, in fact. About 25 grams of that, just go in a bowl like this, like that. Just let them sink, like that. Let all the flavor come out, it's gonna soften them up. That water's gonna get all dirty as well. You're gonna love it. So we'll cook our beef up first of all. While that's all going along, I'm gonna uh, do my veg prep stuff, okay? Cheers. Right here, so I've done my veg prep and it's time to move on. There's lots of interesting smells in the kitchen. First thing is the beef, which is in there cooking well, well away, well, well away. It's cooked through, so there's no blood in sight, but it's not completely obliterated yet. We don't want that to happen. Porcini, I know it said it smelled a dog, but duh. And the smell, it's kind of like a nice smelly dog smell, okay? It's good. And that residue that we get left over, you could actually add that to the soup as well if you're interested. I'm doing that a lot with my hands, sorry. Uh, yeah, but we're just gonna actually stick in the lumpy porcini bits. Now in here, I've got some thyme sprigs, thyme sprigs, sprigs, uh, an onion which has been chopped, and a carrot which is grated, and also two garlic cloves crushed. I'm going to chuck that all in there, and it goes like so. Cook it through, start to soften it up. Oh, here we go. Festival colours in there, and then we're going to move on to some more. Right ho, next thing to do is to chop up your mushrooms, okay? I've got 400 grams of white mushrooms in there with my drained porcini. Now I've cut it nice and chunky and hunky which is how I like it, but you can have it nice and finely thin and stuff if you want, it's completely up to you. I'm chucking them all in that pan there. It looks like it's quite whoop in that pan, but trust me, it's all gonna shrink. I'm gonna start to add some water in with it now. This is 500 mils, but we're gonna add over one, well, run about 1.2 liters in there. So we have the first 500 mil in there. Oh my goodness, I'll stir that in just a minute. And you know I was talking about this little excess residue you get from the porcini, almost like a porcini lake. We're actually gonna put this in. I'll change my mind. We'll come to that in a minute. Let's get this together. Okay, so I've just added another 500 mils of the standard water in there. And now rather than doing that with a stock cube and you're making your stock up and then pouring it in, that's why I've added the water separately. So with your one litre of water in there, grab a vegetable stock cube and just uh, get that in there like so and sort of stir that through any minute now. Now I was going to add 1.25 litres of water, but the remaining amount, which is roughly 200 mils, is going to be made up of that portini stock which does smell like dog. So in that goes, like so. I'm also gonna add a little bit of tomato puree to sweeten it up and give it a little bit of a spank factor. Here we go. Two tablespoons in there. Again, stir it through because looking at it like that, it kinda looks like a pizza. We're not making a pizza soup. Oh no, 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 no. So stir that through. And last but not least, is something similar to sherry called masala. I've never used it before. It smells like sherry. Let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, smells like Christmas. Tastes like Christmas too. Um, about five tablespoons of that going in there. Yeah. It's gonna give it a real sweet edge. The alcohol content will burn off, so don't worry about that. And um, we'll stir this all through, bring it up to a simmer, and let it all soften up together for around about half an hour, like I said. If you let a little bit get rushed, bleh, 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 rushed. if you get rushed and you're keen to get it finished soon, it's gonna be a more watery soup. So the longer you leave it to simmer down, it's gonna be thicker, baby. Okay, so this soup is just about to come up to a simmer, then I leave it alone, I promise you. I'm gonna add 100 grams of pearl barley just to thicken it up even more. That's gonna go really nice and give it sort of like a wintry texture for these summer months. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I just need to get rid of it. It's been in the cupboard for ages. So let's stir it all through. Oh my God, the heat and the smell. I can't wait to taste that later on. Leave that as a simmer for half an hour. And all you gotta do now is make your bread bowl. 
Okay, so here is my bread roll I'm gonna serve my soup in. Just to let you know, the soup is over there, just roaring away, can you see that? Oh yeah, it's having a good time. So we go back here, all I've done is grab the knife and trimmed off the top lid, cha-ching. Well, simply, the easiest way to do it is to get your hands in there, old school, like a little kid around the supermarket, and pick out clumps of bread. Now be careful not to go too close to the side, because you don't want it so that it's just crushed on that real thin layer, otherwise some of the soup might break through. So get as much out as you can, but don't be too over generous with it, my friends. Okay, that'll do for me. I've taken all my bread out, nice big pile of it here. So we've got it nice and hollow, but still thick enough to hold it all in. And the good thing is about these little bits of bread we've got left is you can dunk it in your soup at the end. So all we've got to do now is wait for the soup to be done, baby. All right. Right here, my friends, that has been 37 minutes to be precise. The smell that's coming out is so good. One of my neighbors just knocked on the door and asked me for the recipe. How cool is that? Anyhow, check this out. It's not looking like that angle, but it's simmered down too much. But trust me, it has. If we just give it a little stir, look, all that coming to the surface. And trust me, the smell is, is so good. I've been doing little cheeky dips of the bread as well. I've been getting some of this, dipping it in there, which is an amazing use for that. You just going to use it with your soup. So what I'm going to do is get the soup from there, put it in the bowl, Get some creme fraiche in there as well, a little bit of cheese. I'm gonna eat it, all of it. Right here, my friends, nice big bowl there, and here is a spoonful of the soup, so I'm just gonna dribble that in and try not to get any on the chopping board, which I already have, never mind. So I'm gonna fill this up as much as I can. Join me in just a moment. Fantastic, so I brought you a little closer just to see that. Look, it's piping hot, it's still coming out there. A little bit of creme fraiche on the top there. Just sort of spread that around a teeny weeny bit. Oh my goodness, it's all gonna sort of melt in there anyway. Let's get some Parmesan cheese as well. Yeah, just uh, sprinkle some Parmesan all around it, like so. Oh my goodness, a little bit up there. And some more down there, oh I love my Parmesan. Oh, that's good. Some sprigs of thyme, just put it on the top like that. And that, my friends, is done. And I'm ready to eat it, spoon in it, wow. There we go then guys, that is it all finished. The creme fraiche parmesan cheese, a bit more thyme sprig on there as well. I've got my rough bit of breadcrumbs on the side there ready to dunk in it. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a big spoon like that, go straight into it, and let me tell you what it tastes like straight away. Oh, it's hot. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Wow. I should have let, maybe given that two more minutes to let it cool down. But that. Oh my goodness, the taste is incredible. And that little bit of Parmesan right on the end and that tweak of creme fraiche just calms it down. A teeny, the hand, the whole video, the hand has been doing that, I'm so sorry. That tastes incredible. So if I can make that, absolutely anyone in the world can. Uh, it'll be the French made video next time, I promise. Have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on. I'll see you again next time. Cheers.